But last week we did a deep dive into Mew OS, but this week we'll be taking a look at Garlic OS on the Ambernic RG35XX SP, which as we did last week, we'll be calling the SP for the rest of the video. And after playing with both Mew OS and Garlic OS, I think the decision between the two comes down to if you are a person who would prefer to buy an ROG Ally or a Steam Deck. Let me explain. So the people that prefer the Steam Deck usually just want a point and click experience with their Steam library. It's basically the consolification, if you will, of PC gaming. Whereas if you choose the ROG Ally, it's running Windows. So although you can push the hardware a little further and have access to a wider library of games and uh, other libraries outside of Steam, you do occasionally have to go and edit a config file to make a game run full screen properly. And that's very much the key difference that I found between MuOS and Garlic OS, at least with Garlic OS Alpha version 2.0.2, which I was running on the SP. With MuOS, you have lots of customization to play with and a few more consoles that it supports. Whereas on Garlic OS, its focus is to give you just a clean interface for selecting the game you want to play and the extent of its customization is just access to the retro arch menu for any tweaks you may want to do there and that's by design the blog post for the garlic os 2.0 announcement states specifically that garlic os is a game first tinker later operating system but even though i'm more of a tinkerer than an accept things as they are person i did enjoy playing with garlic quite a bit and i've got some cool findings to share but first let's go over how to actually install it on the sp but these steps will likely apply to all devices that garlic os 2.0 supports so the way garlic os 2.0 2.0 works is to put a compatible bootloader onto the stock OS card of your micro SD card in the TF1 slot, and then the TF2 card will have just a little boot folder with an init script and the latest Garlic OS 2.0 image, meaning that the developer can improve the cross platform general Garlic OS image while maintaining that separately from the device specific bootloader. And that cross platform approach should both save time in trying to figure out the specifics of a particular device by piggybacking off of the kernel they've already figured out in their stock OS, and also preventing slightly older devices from getting left in the lurch because they weren't getting the updates, since they should already have a working bootloader and can just update the image on the second SD card, which is pretty sweet. In my case, my stock SD card that came with my Ambernic SP was fairly untouched, so I already had that prerequisite, but if you formatted yours or lost yours in some way, you can just go to Ambernic's website and download the latest stock image from their site and flash it to any old micro SD card. Then we'll need to grab the appropriate bootloader for the SP, at the time of this video, the developer said in a blog post that the RG35XX Plus bootloader works just fine for the SP, so we'll grab that zip file and unzip it onto the root of the stock micro SD card. Next up, we'll eject that card and put our TF2 card in the computer. We'll format it to XFAT, then create a folder on it called boot. Then we'll grab the latest garlic OS zip image and extract it into that new boot folder. Finally, we'll create a new file in that boot folder called init with no file extension. Then we'll copy paste this init template code from the garlic init template repo. Don't worry about knowing what this does, it just works, so just save the file. We can then eject the TF2 card and put it in the TF2 slot, put the TF1 card in the TF1 slot, and finally boot up the SP. If all the files are in the right place, you'll see the garlic OS menu pop up after boot instead of the default Ambernic stock. And if your install experience is like mine, you'll go to your library folder and wonder why none of the consoles were picked up, even though you have a pretty clearly named ROMs folder that follows the stock and MuOS naming schemes. I tried for a good while to find a way to change the location of the ROMs directory and where it was looking, and online it said that you should just be able to create a ROM folder in the root and if it finds one in uh, SD card 2 it'll use that and if it finds one in SD card 1 it'll use that but to save you time the shorter answer is no at least in the alpha build the only way to get ROMs to show up is to go into the library folder that it creates on the TF2 card and then inside there you'll see a list of console folders and you'll copy and paste your ROMs into there and that will actually allow those consoles and their games to show up in your library folder on Garlic OS. The console folders you see available is a pretty easy way to know which consoles Garlic OS 2 currently supports, which at the time of this video was up to SNES and Virtual Boy for Nintendo consoles, GBA for Nintendo handhelds, PS1, Sega CD, and Genesis, and pretty much everything older than those. The annoyance of having to copy my ROMs into these specific folders and also lacking support for N64, DS, and PSP was a pretty decent drawback for me. However, I do have to give Garlic OS credit for sticking to their ethos of providing a very game-first point and shoot experience. And that's because for the consoles that it does support, it was a very pleasant experience of just opening up a game, all the controls were as I expected them to be, and then when I hit menu, it actually automatically creates a save state, which it auto-resumes next time you open that game, which came in quite handy when I was having the best Tetris game of my life on this thing, and I only had time to reach for one button to bail out and save the state before having to go do something else. With regards to emulation performance, it is overall very solid, as you'd expect on the SP. However, I did notice an occasional audio or frame stutter. 
at least when playing on the current alpha 2.0.2 build. And the developer is very aware of this as they mentioned in a recent post that all all winner H700 devices at this point in time suffer from IO related slowdown issues, which rear their ugly heads as frame pacing, sound setter, and excessive loading time issues. I'm still looking into this, so bear with me for the time being. Which makes total sense as although Garlic OS 1 was fairly full featured with a number of available ports, theme support, apps, and more, the developer kind of had to start fresh with Garlic OS 2 because they needed to work it back to make it cross compatible across current and future devices. Whereas Garlic OS 1 was only compatible with specific devices that are starting to fall out of favor as newer devices come out like the SP. And as a developer, I can certainly appreciate trying to maintain a cross-platform code base so that you can do work once and benefit from it in many places. I'm sure there's quite a road ahead as the developer works to move from Garlic OS 1 to 2 and give it the same feature set and support and smoothness as the original. And if you're a fan of Garlic OS 1 or 2, I definitely recommend supporting them on their Patreon. I did myself this past week and actually if you support at a certain tier, you actually get certain builds 30 days sooner than the public release, so there's some cool perks to gain there. Speaking of the differences between Garlic OS 1 and 2, I do want to drive the point home that when you're looking up guides or documentation or how-tos online for using Garlic OS, make sure you're looking at the one meant for your version of Garlic OS that your device supports because I definitely wasted a lot of time looking at Garlic OS 1 documentation and various Reddit threads and YouTube videos that gave me no helpful information for Garlic OS 2, which is the only one that my SP supports. So I'm basically here trying to save you all of my mistake time and, uh, Hope you enjoy your devices more. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything key about Garlic OS 2.0 that would have prohibited me from having a better experience with it. I'm super open to learning more about it. And also let me know if you're going to choose MuOS, Garlic OS, Stock, or some other variant because there's a lot of good options out there. I'm sure there are going to be more coming. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, tap out the channel, and we'll see you next week.